Welcome to another video from Mastery Tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the frictional force. So frictional force is a force that acts opposite to the direction of the motion. So if you have an object that is moving to the right, so if this is your object moving to the right, so it moves to the right at a velocity of V. Now frictional force will be taking place at the contact surface. Take this as now your road. Take this as your road. Now frictional force will be acting backwards. And we normally call frictional force as FF. There's different ways in which um, different books used to uh, represent frictional force. But then in this video, we, only we are going to represent frictional force as FF. Now, as I already mentioned to you, that frictional force acts in the opposite direction of the force. Now, think about an object that is moving to the right. And now we have another one that is moving to the left. So now this is the contact surface. And then now because the velocity now is to the left now, the object is moving at the velocity to the left. Now we're going to have frictional force will be, will be acting on the contact surface to the right. So frictional force is always acting opposite to the direction of the motion. So the formula that it is used to calculate the frictional force is given as follows. So FF is given as mu times the normal force so now mu is a value that is always between 0 and 1 it never exceeds 1 so it is always between 0 and 1 and then in a case where mu is 0 it means that when you come here and substitute 0 the frictional force is going to be 0 so meaning that in that case um, the frictional force is not in existence there's no frictional force between the contact surface and the object but then now in a case where frictional force is equal to one it means that frictional force is at its maximum for that object when frictional force is equal to one it means that it's at its maximum now look at it this way so if mu is equal to zero it means that frictional force is going to be zero times n which is equal to zero newton and remember that the the units for frictional force is newton is n so now in the case where in this case it means that there is no friction between the contact surface and the object now another case now we can have mu to be equal to one now this simply means that the frictional force is going to be one times n which is equal to just n now this simply means that the frictional force is at its maximum it, it at its is at its highest value that it can ever be now frictional force is divided into two there are two types of frictional force we have uh, the static friction st static friction and then now the second one is the kinetic friction kinetic friction Static friction, it takes place, is a frictional force that takes place on objects that are at rest. So this is the frictional force. This is the reason why when you park a car, um, you, you, without pulling up the handbrake, you find that if you park the car on a horizontal surface, the car doesn't move forward or backwards. It means that now, the any forces that is acting on the, on, the, on the object that is trying to push it forward or backwards is being opposed by the static frictional force. So it's acting on that object, it wants it to remain at rest. It's sort of like uh, resisting its motion. Now the formula that you would use to calculate the frictional force now we call it FF, and then we're just going to put an S there. Now this S stands for static. This N for, stands for static there. So now the stat static frictional force will be given as mu S times N. So the, the S here is for any object that is at rest. So it's the mu for any object that is at rest. Now we have another one here which is the kinetic friction. Now this one is a frictional force for objects that are in motion. Now 
the formula that you would use now to calculate this one we're going to call it ffk where the k stands for kinetic so the mu is going to be mu k times n as you can see in both cases the formula to calculate frictional force doesn't change it's mu times n but then now the only difference is that here the mu has an s which is for static now the mu here is for it's 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 it has a k which is for kinetic now in in a given scenario or for a certain object for a given object now mu f mu s is always greater than mu k the reason why this is the case is is that it is either to to accelerate an object to a higher speed that is already in motion than to actually get an object to move from rest so now if i was to park a car for example and then i say push this car from speed and then also if i was to ask you to push the same car that is already in motion suppose it's moving at 20 kilometers per hour and then i want you to increase that speed maybe i want you to push it to a point where it will be moving at 25 kilometers per hour now it's going to be very difficult for you to push the car from rest to a point where it is it's moving at a certain speed then to actually move uh, the car from 20 kilometers per hour to 25 kilometers per hour so this is the reason why this is the reason why that that is the case so mu s is greater than mu k so an object that is moving experiences less friction as it would when it was at rest so this simply means that ffs is always greater than ffk so now let's look at two cases now in which you would be expected to calculate friction so now case one is for horizontal surface horizontal surface now here we're saying that the object is moving on a horizontal surface now look at it this way suppose we are given that okay there's an object that is on a horizontal surface now let's take it as a box now this is our box that is on a horizontal surface now to calculate the, the normal force now we need to first draw the free body diagram now the free body diagram is going to be in this case so let us use a dot to represent the object and then now there's the weight that is acting on the object and the weight now is acting at 90 degrees to the surface suppose this is your surface and then now this is going to be your weight remember this is the horizontal surface so now the weight acts at 90 degrees and then another force that is acting on this object is the normal force the normal force so normal force acts in 90 degrees to the surface this we always know we must always know that okay normal force acts at 90 degrees to the horizontal surface always acts at 90 degrees to the horizontal to the surface rather to the surface so i repeat normal force always acts at 90 degrees to the surface so there it is then now this is case number one now if you want to know as to what the frictional force the, the frictional force for this case is going to be you first now need to calculate the sum of the forces in the vertical direction so now in this case we're going to use our cartesian plane is it's going to be in this way so we're going to have the upwards to be positive y and then the horizontal now to the right is going to be our positive x so now we sum all the forces in the y direction where we're going to take y to be upwards to be positive so now these forces are going to sum up to zero the reason why these forces now are adding up to zero is because as this object is on the surface it does not move up or it does not move down it is just stationary in this direction in this vertical direction therefore that's why we say okay the sum of the forces in the vertical direction add, add up to zero now what are the forces that are in the vertical direction now when you look at our free body diagram we have the normal force and the weight those are the only two forces we have in this case that are in the vertical direction 
So now since we've already shown that our k upwards is positive, it means that we're going to take this n as, as a positive value. So it's going to be n. And then now, this one now is acting in the opposite direction, which is in the negative direction. Therefore, it's going to be minus w, which is equals to 0. Therefore, now n is going to be w. And we know that, okay, w, always the formula that you use to calculate w is mg. Therefore, if we come and substitute that mg here, we know that, okay, the normal force is going to be uh, mg, like that. And then now if you calculate the frictional force, frictional force, as we know, that is given by this formula, it's mu n. Now, if you calculate, if you substitute this n, now we know that, okay, n, n is equals to mg. Now, we come and substitute mg there. We know that, okay, the frictional force will be m mu mg, like that. So, now, if it's a static kinetic friction, if it's a static frictional force, it's going to be mu s mg. And then, for kinetic frictional force, it's going to be mu k mg now this is the first case now which is um, a case where the object is on a horizontal surface so frictional force is given by mu mg now let us look at a second case now case number two where the object now object on an inclined surface inclined surface so in this case, our object is moving on an inclined surface. Suppose this is our inclined surface now. And then obviously here we're going to have our angle, which is theta, with the horizontal. Now this is our object there. It is still a box. Now to understand the forces now, we are going to first establish our Cartesian plane. Now let us establish our Cartesian plane in this way. So any force that is in there, that is perpendicular to this surface, we're going to take it to be in the positive y direction. And then any force that is going to be parallel to this direction is going to be in our positive x direction. So this is the Cartesian plane that we are going to use. Now we are going to go ahead and draw the free body diagram. So the free body diagram... is given as follows. So we have our object, and then remember, this is our inclined surface. So this is going to be our inclined surface, and then we're going to have our object there. There it is. So now we're going to start with the weight. Weight is always acting in at vertically downwards to the center of the earth. So this is our weight there. And then if you take this force and put it there, it is going to be the same. It's going to be just W acting vertically downwards this is w and you know that w is equals to mg rather let me write it here we know that w is equals to mg always the weight is always equals to mg now so let us put the normal force as i've already explained here that normal force always acts at 90 degrees to the surface or rather we can say perpendicular to the surface so therefore this is going to be the direction in which the normal force will be acting. That's going to be the normal force, which is 90 degrees to the surface. At 90 degrees, or at perpendicular to the surface. Now, we're going to break this force, this weight now, into its component. Because remember, we are using this Cartesian plane right now. So where this normal force is already in the right direction, but now the weight is not in any of these two directions. So meaning that we can break it into its components in, in such a way that it is actually in these two directions. So now breaking the, the weight now into the two directions, we are going to have another force that is going to be acting in this direction, like that. Now because this is the component of the weight, and then it's perpendicular to the surface, we are going to call it W perpendicular. And then now we're going to draw another one that is going to be going in this direction. And now because this component is parallel to the surface, we're going to call it W parallel. So these are the two components that we are going to break the weight into. Now we are going to put this angle theta here. We're going to put it there. Now if you want to know how this 
angle got to this point, not at that point. Um, I would advise you to apply your your geometry knowledge from grade eight geometry. You'd be able to find this angle there at that point there. Or maybe if you can't do that by yourself, if you need help, you can actually leave a comment here and then I can create a separate video that will be explaining this. Now, I want you to remember that, okay, this angle there is going to be 90 degrees. Now, to find this W perpendicular in terms of weight or this W parallel in terms of weight, we do the following. So, if you're going to apply Sokatoa, uh, where since we want to write this one with respect to w we are going to say sine so standing from this point this is your opposite this is, uh, is your adjacent so now sine theta sine theta is equals to opposite over adjacent our opposite is this side here so it's going to be w parallel over W. w is the hypotenuse because remember these two forces are the components of this one so therefore this one has to be the resultant um, vector so therefore this one becomes w parallel if you cross multiply you're going to end up with w sine theta now if you do the same thing with cos you're going to have cos theta is going to be w perpendicular over cos theta which ultimately becomes w cos theta and we know that okay w is equals to mg therefore we can say the following w parallel is equals to mg sine theta like that and then here w perpendicular is equals to mg sine cos rather cos theta just like that now we come here and calculate the frictional force now frictional force we know that okay frictional force is given by nu times n and then we know that okay our n is the normal force and then now we calculate the sum of the forces in the vertical direction so sum of the forces in the vertical direction our vertical direction now we are actually referring to the y direction and then we know that okay they have to sum up to zero and then we have that direction as positive so this direction is that direction there we're seeing that okay any force that is in this direction we're going to consider it to be positive now when you look at this free body diagram we have the normal force that is acting in that direction so therefore it's going to be the positive force and then we have the component of the weight which is the w perpendicular which is acting still in this direction so we're going to say minus w perpendicular i want you to pay attention in this in this case we're not subtracting w w is not in our direction so only the components that is perpendicular to the surface is in our direction so therefore this is equals to zero now we equate it to zero because i repeat this object is not moving in this direction or in that direction so the object it might be moving in the upwards direction or in the horizon in the downwards direction but not in the up and down direction so therefore n is equals to w perpendicular but we already know that okay w perpendicular is equals to mg cos theta so therefore n is going to be mg cos theta now that we have this now we can go and calculate the frictional force so the frictional force was given as mu times n but we know that okay n is equals to mg cos theta therefore we come and say now the frictional force is going to be mu mg cos of theta so now there's a difference now when the object is in a horizontal surface this is how we calculate the frictional force um, mu mg but then now if the, the object now it's at an inclined surface the frictional force formula changes to mu mg cos theta so now for static so for static friction the frictional force now is going to be mu mg 
cos theta and then for kinetic friction the frictional force will be now mu k mg cos theta so to further help you understand this let's, let us take two questions now suppose now we have an object so an object that is on a horizontal surface so let's say this is our object which is 10 kg and then now we need to calculate the frictional force so we know that okay the weight of this object now is going to be in this case if you consider the free body diagram you're going to have the weight there and then now this is going to be your horizontal surface and then you're going to have the normal force so we know that okay weight is given by mg and then our m here is given as 10 kg so let me write it here m is given as 10 kg in this case so now w is going to be 10 kg times 9.8 meters per second squared now it depends which value you guys are using in your textbook or in your school but then the value is always like around here therefore w is going to be 98 newtons so that's going to be our weight so now when you calculate the sum of the forces in the vertical direction which sum amounts to zero where vertical is taken as positive we are going to say n minus w because these are the only two forces in the vertical direction and then we say is equals to zero therefore n is equals to w but we already know that okay w is equals to 98 therefore n is equals to 98 newton so now we can go ahead and calculate the frictional force suppose now we are given that a okay, static friction is given as or rather the, the the mu for the friction is given as 0 0.5 so now the friction now in this case will be given as mu times n and then frictional force is given by mu is given as 0 0.5 there therefore substitute 0 0.5 times n is given as 98 therefore we say 98 and then now the frictional force becomes 49 newton that is the frictional force for this case now let's look at another example where the object now is at an inclined surface this is our case now the 10 kg object is now at an inclined surface and then suppose now this angle theta here yeah, theta is given as 30 degrees and then mu is still 0 0.5 now we are required to calculate the frictional force so the first thing that we do here is we draw the free body diagram so it's going to be our object there and then obviously we're going to be the, have the weight weight is always vertically downwards so there's the weight there and then here we have the surface so this is the our surface there and then obviously we're going to have the normal force normal force is always acting vertically upwards and then we are going to consider this way normal force is acting at an angle rather not vertical upwards but at an angle and also always perpendicular to the surface so therefore this is going to be our positive and then this is going to be our positive x direction and therefore now we break this this weight now into its components so we're going to have the first component is going to be moving in this direction so this one's going to be our w perpendicular and then we're going to have another one in that direction which is our w parallel and then now from this now we're going to move on to calculate now these forces so now as we've already worked out the formulas that you'd have to use for these components so these are the components we are interested in this one so w perpendicular is equals to mg cos theta so i'm just gonna put it here that okay w perpendicular is equals to 
mg cos theta. Now, let us calculate what this W perpendicular is. So, calculating what W perpendicular is, is equals to mg cos theta. And then, we know that, okay, the normal force, as we've already calculated, for an inclined situation, normal force is equals to mg cos theta as well. So, normal force is equals to mg cos theta and then we substitute what we know so n is equals to mg is going to be m is going to be 10 times g is 9.8 times cos of 30 degrees and then this whole thing gives you 49 square root of 3 newtons which is approximately 84.8 seven zero newtons now we're gonna go ahead and now and calculate the frictional force so frictional force is given by mu times n and therefore if we substitute now what we know mu is given to us as 0 0.5 so therefore we're gonna have 0 0.5 times now n is given as 49 square root of 3 or 84.870 Newton. So 49 square root of 3. Now this one gives us 42.44 newtons. So this is our frictional force. And then this simply means that the object experiences less friction when it's on an, when it's on an inclined surface than it does when it's on a horizontal surface. This is proven by the fact that the value that we got in the in the horizontal surface was actually 49 newtons. But then now in this case, it's actually 42.44. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something. Please leave a comment if you have any question. Subscribe if you're new to this channel. And once again, thank you for your time for watching this. Goodbye.